Hi, my name is Cindy and I'm part of the partnerships team here at Pinterest. Today I'm going to provide you an overview on how to get started with Pinterest ads. By the end of this video, you should feel confident in your ability to run either CPC or CPE promoted pins on Pinterest, as well as navigate our ads dashboard. To get started, the first thing you should do is log into your Pinterest business account. Once you're logged in, you should go to your profile page. As you can see here, I'm actually logged in to the main Pinterest for Business account. This is where I can get started with promoting pins on Pinterest. There's a couple ways to navigate to our ads manager. You could click on the drop down gear here and select promoted pins, or you can simply click on the red promote pins button here, which I'm going to do right now. This takes you to our ads manager. You can also see that if you simply go to ads.pinterest.com up here in the URL, that that's another way to access our ads manager. The page that I'm looking at here is the main summary dashboard for any campaigns that you run with Pinterest. If you're not running anything, you'll see a bunch of zeros when you first log in. But as you can see here, I've been running several campaigns for Pinterest, so I have some stats in my summary dashboard. If you look here at the top, this is a summary of all the impressions, the engagements, the conversions if I'm tracking any, and my overall investment over the last 30 days on Pinterest. One interesting call out here is that we're actually showcasing some of the earned metrics, such as you earned an extra 200,000 impressions, and cost savings due to the downstream nature of promoted pins, and the fact that we never charge on any of our downstream activity for cost per engagement or cost per click promoted pins. Scrolling down here on the summary, you can see that we have stats for all of the campaigns you're running. You could be running engagement campaigns, which is a cost per engagement model, or your traffic oriented campaigns, which is a cost per click model. By clicking into view all here for engagement or view all here for traffic, this will take you to a summary of your CPC or CPE campaigns. To finish scrolling through the summary dashboard here, we're also highlighting the best performing and some of the lowest performing promoted pins if you look at click-through rates or engagement rates. And I also wanted to call out some tips and tricks down here, which is some of our best practice guides for business accounts as well as creating great pins for Pinterest. To get started with creating your first campaign and promoted pin, you can simply click on the Promote button up here at the top right-hand corner of the page. This now begins the flow for choosing what type of bidding I want for my new promoted pin. I could choose to bid on engagements, which will drive reach and awareness of my business and my service, or I can choose to drive traffic to my website. For this pin, I want to drive traffic, so I'm going to click on that. Now I'm going to decide where do I want this pin to sit. If I have existing campaigns, which I do, I could select an existing campaign in the dropdown, or I could create a new campaign. So I'm going to create a new campaign. I'm going to call it August 2015 Marketing Campaign. And then here I'll create New Traffic Campaign. So this is where I'll choose my start and an end date if I want for my campaign. I'm not going to choose an end date, but I can always pause any pins if I want or the campaign at any point in time. This is where I'll also set my daily budget for the campaign. I'm going to go with $100 a day for this campaign, but I can always edit the budget as well as the end date at any point for the campaign. The next thing I'll do is choose which pins I want to go into this campaign. Again, campaigns is what house the budget as well as the start and the end date, but the pins and the targeting and all the terms sit at the pin level. So now I'm going to choose my pin. One great call out here is that you can look at all pins to your profile or you can choose the 30 day most clicked or 30 day most repinned as coming from your analytics. This is a great way to get started with choosing pins that might drive the best engagement or best uh, traffic to your website. One thing to point out here is that you can only promote pins that have a URL with them. If you upload, upload an image file to your profile, you need to make sure that that image has an actual URL before you can promote it. Additionally, the pin must be on a public board. It cannot be on a private board. With that said, I'm going to choose this pin. 
This now takes me to all the targeting. As I mentioned, the targeting and the bids sit at the pin level. This pin will then map to the campaign that I just created that has the $100 budget, as you can see here. It's an ongoing campaign with no end date, and I named it August 2015 Marketing. So I'm going to start with selecting a few terms. Marketing ideas, since I want to promote Pinterest promoted pins, so I'll select that. And then you can see here, there's results that directly relate to what I input into the term bar, but then there's also related terms. If I click on Add All, it will add all terms to my targeting, or I could select one at a time. So I'm going to select Marketing Ideas, Marketing Ideas for Small Business, and then maybe I'll add in some more here. Let's look at Marketing Overall, add that one, Marketing Strategy, and so on and so forth. Overall, if you look at some of our best practice videos, you'll note that we recommend targeting at least 20 terms per pin. This will help ensure that you have the most reach with your promoted pins across search, as well as category and home feed. At the end of the day, we will report back on terms for all of the pins you're running, whether it's a cost per click or cost per engagement pin. And that's how you can optimize. So now you can see in this right-hand side, the summary is updated, and I'm targeting four terms. Scrolling down from my targeting, this is where you can choose location, language, device, and gender. You should leave the default to all across these different dimensions unless you only offer your product or service in a specific location, for example. Over 80% of Pinterest traffic is on mobile devices, so it's critical that you run on all devices. You could, if you want, choose to run this campaign on desktop only and then maybe create the same campaign running on mobile only just for purposes of manage your campaigns across devices a little bit more easily. So the next step here is where you pick your max CPC bid. Again, for CPC promoted pins, we will only charge you on a click through to your website. Any instance of a promoted pin when it's repinned and then discovered thereafter, we call that a downstream click. If someone discovers a repin of a promoted pin and clicks through to your site, that is all earned traffic that we would never charge you for. So I'm gonna start here with a $1.50 bid. You can see here, we do have bid indicators letting you know if your bid is strong or not high enough. For example, let's say I put five cents in here. You can see that Pinterest is letting me know this bid is too low and I'm not going to get any traffic. Other partners that are bidding bid between a range of 64 to a dollar and six cents for these terms that I'm bidding on. So I'm gonna go back and just say, hmm, you know what, I'm gonna start with my dollar bid. This seems like a good bid and that's what I'll start with. From there, I can simply click on Promote. And now, I'm taken to my campaign summary with this new promoted pin that is now also pending review. If you haven't gone through this flow before, you will be prompted to provide your billing credit card information. This is a one-time thing that you'll have to do to set up promoted pins. One call out too is that at any point in time, if you need to change billing contact information or credit card, you can simply go to Tools as I'm doing here in this dropdown, and click on Billing. So here again is the summary of my campaign with this new promoted pin. If I go back and click on this Ads link up here, this is going to take me back to that main summary dashboard in my Ads Manager. To dive through traffic campaigns or engagement campaigns, you can simply click on View All, or go to Reports and click on All Traffic Campaigns or All Engagement Campaigns. So I'm going to click on all traffic campaigns just to walk through a little bit of summary of what our ads manager will show you for any promoted pin that you run, whether it's a CPC promoted pin or a CPE promoted pin. So here I am, and this is a summary of all of my traffic campaigns. You can see that I've run 17 campaigns, but I actually have eight that are active. So I'm going to select my active campaigns to get a quicker view of what's currently running. Here's where I can select my drop down and say, you know what, I want to look at the last 30 days. You could select the dates manually yourself if you want to look over the last quarter, for example, as well. At any point in time, whether I'm on the summary view here or click into a promoted pin, I can export the data and get insights for how my, my campaigns are performing. So if I click on this campaign running here, this is now going to take me into a pin level view. So I'm one layer deeper into understanding how my campaigns are performing. Now that I'm within this Eng test campaign, I can see that I've got two pins that are running. 
If I export data here by cl clicking on this button, I can now see pin level stats for impressions, clicks, click-through rate, repins, and investment, for example. Even if I click on these different tabs here, I will get the same data for every export. So for example, if I'm tracking conversions, I'll always have conversions at the pin level if I export from this view. If I want to see keyword level data, then I can click one more time and go into the pin level data. Because again, all of the terms and the targeting sits at the pin level. So here's where I could export my data at the term level to understand not just terms, but how am I performing across devices if I'm running on all devices for this pin. Going back to the tools, I had mentioned before, we do allow for conversion tracking, which is Pinterest's own pixel that allows you to track any sort of on-site activity, whether you're bidding on CPE or a CPC basis. So within this view, I can look at any sort of conversion tracking that I have set up. So you can see here that for my campaigns thus far, I've been tracking page visits. And I set my look back windows at 30 days for click-throughs, 30 days for engagements, and then one day for a view. The quick overview on how our pixel works is that if the pixel fires on your site, whether it's a page visit, you're tracking leads, or you're tracking actual checkouts, the first thing we'll do is we'll look for a click through on your promoted pin within whatever that look back window is that you set. If we don't see a click through, in this case within 30 days, then the next thing we'll look for is an engagement. If we see that an engagement such as a repin or click happened on your promoted pin, then we'll associate that page visit or if it's a checkout or uh, a sign up, back to that engagement. And then the last thing we'll look for is a view, which is a simply an impression of a promoted pin. So if you click here, this is where you can create your conversion tags. So I'm going to go back to my ads dashboard. And again, this is where I can simply click into any campaigns that I'm running to get a high level overview of how Pinterest ads are performing. And with that said, you should feel confident in your ability now to create your first promoted pin on Pinterest, bid on CPE or CPC, as well as gain insights from our ads manager. Thanks so much.